What is happening crew? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Brent. Today we are going to be getting into another Blockchain 5 episode. Uh, really just talking about the physical and philosophical pillars that make up blockchain and why these things make it so robust and so badass. And I can't wait to get into it with you. Today we're going to be talking about decentralization and distribution, what those things mean, what nodes mean, and get into that just a little bit deeper. So without further ado, let's get after it. Okay, crew, here we go. We're getting after it on decentralization and distribution. Uh, I'd love to write it out here generally, if y'all are readers, uh, so you can uh, visualize it. I'm a very visual person. Um, and then I'm not sitting up here and it feels like high school and trying to teach something to you, but rather uh, I just want uh, everybody uh, who subscribes to understand the basics. And again, getting back into why do we care about this? Why do we care about blockchain technology? Why do we think that it could be beneficial to how we do things and how we run things? Um, so what I love about it and why I'm so fascinated by it and why I invest in it is because I am just fascinated by how it all works and how it all plays together. And so, uh, Think of this conversation as, as uh, both phil philosophical and physical um, because uh, the, the blockchains that exist in the world are uh, physically written codes that have their own uh, consensus mechanisms and, and rules and, and um, the way that they're set up so that they are uh, more robust, so that they are systems that uh, are going to work well. Um, and I'm going to give you um, all some really fun examples of kind of why that is. Um, so talking about um, the, the, the blockchain five, um, two of the big five um, like pillars that I think of are decentralization and dis distribution. Uh, decentralization, and, and this is what I picture in my, inside my head, uh, every time I hear the world word now is, um, so you've got this centralized entity. Let's say uh, the example that I like to use is a bank. So you are essentially sending your money and your data and your information to the bank. And then the bank essentially is third party and they are deciding uh, whenever and however they want how to redistribute that back to you. They have their own rules and ways that they do things. And why decentralization versus centralization, which is something that I'm uh, written down right here, <laughs> I wrote down right there, uh, is uh, the balance. I think there will always be a balance in the world and in societies. Um, in terms of uh, centralized versus uh, uh, the way things work and the way we're, we govern ourselves and, and the way we do banking and the way we uh, function as people, uh, we are all, I've been thinking about this so much lately, uh, very natural. Uh, nature is um, the, the ultimate balancing machine. Um, on this planet and and we are such a huge part of that that is that is totally what we are it feels like to me anyway um, and so right now in the world I, I think a lot of us can argue that that we have a very s centralized you know uh, uh, our governments and our leaders and and there are in, there's so much control and, and these big corporations and these big uh, banks and entities, big, big central banks, um, we are feeding them. We are feeding them our information and our power and our data and our and, and all those things. And and um, understanding about decentralization, and I'll make it as simple as possible right now, is really just um, creating systems like blockchain to where we all can transact with each other essentially cutting out the middleman. 
Um, and so where I want to see that go and where I hope it goes in the future, and it looks like it's already happening um, in all these different um, uh, institutions, is uh, this is Brent's big industry wish list right here. Um, governance or governments, uh, data storage and usage, banking, healthcare, supply chains, real estate, contracts and legal services, and security. Um, I hope that all these things are hopefully in the next five to 10 years just revolutionized by blockchain technology and 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 create that balance of of centralized versus decentralization um just again because i believe in blockchain and, and how robust it is and how um how successful it is um in being immutable which is one of the other five um so having your money and your data and your assets and anything that you got on the books, um, not allowing those things to be uh, altered or changed uh, without your consent or your approval or the way that you would like to do it. So that to me is the big, the big uh, love and desire and hope that, that we have a more decentralized world. Uh, I do think there needs to be a balance and I think there will be no matter what. Um, and then again, I just indicated here that um, when you hear the term peer to peer, that is that is kind of what we're talking about. When you are able to send data or trades or transactions, um, say me to like my dad, who's the other person on this channel, uh, or to you, and we can do our own banking with each other without the need of a bank because we use cryptocurrencies, let's say, and we have our own secure wallets that we have crypto in. And you decide that you're like, Hey, Brent, you know, I'd like to buy that bicycle from you. And I'm like, well, it's gonna, it's gonna cost you some Bitcoin, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, so, uh, we exchange the bicycle and you send me over the, the Bitcoin and we are able to make a transaction without using uh, a banking system, whether we go to the ATM or whether I have a card that that we swipe of yours that, uh, you know, gives me the payment. So I give you the bicycle. Instead, we're just trading cryptocurrency essentially within each other through our own uh, smart wallets um, and or private wallets. And so that's that's decentralization to me. Um, I think all these things are just going to be so different and so changed because of this technology. And again, this whole series, I wanna go through uh, all those big things with, with all of you. Um, uh, a, a huge one is cryptography and security and um, making your money, your assets, your wealth, your data, your uh, health records, your, the deed to your house, legal services, uh, the creation and, and the coming of smart contracts on the blockchain, um, how we share data and how we uh, um, use the blockchain to maintain accuracy and honesty um, in, in terms of how, how supply chains and how these companies can keep things efficient and honest um, so that they're not hemorrhaging money, you know, by losing out to a certain thing or um, there's not there's not enough data coming from a particular uh, group that they buy from, you know, and, and um, or, or they're being dishonest or um, basically getting rid of uh, the, the the dishonesty in business uh, is, is just going to be such a huge uh, time money saver. And, and again, that's why I'm, I'm so excited about this technology. It is the why, why I'm doing this series, the blockchain five. Um, when I try these dots, um, everyone, these dots, uh, are, are representative of us, 
like each one of us. This is this is the world. It's a very good world. Um, and this is all of us all over the globe and us uh, together. But these are also representing nodes. So you're going to hear this term coming a lot. And uh, a node or a full node, we're just going to say a full node right now, is when your device, so let's, we'll just say your computer, is running a full copy of the blockchain. So we'll just take, again, Bitcoin as the example. Um, you download the entire uh, Bitcoin blockchain on your computer. Uh, and say you want to contribute, you want to let the blockchain and the network use your computer. Um, so you're essentially mining and you are able to give back and, and receive a reward for that, for um, uh, your service to the, to the community, to the blockchain. And that is where we get into distribution. So another term that we're going to hear all the time in the future is going to be uh, distributed ledgers or distributed ledger technology. And there is, um, blockchain's kind of the parent to that, to, to DLTs, um, but they're essentially the same thing. There are differences, um, like uh, DLTs uh, of the future and what what's happening in the industry is uh, like a blockchain runs chronologically, runs in a certain order, um, there's also differences, uh, so, so DLTs now, they're able to do that differently. That's, that's starting to be developed. And then also, um, the big part of blockchain and, and one of its essential factors is, uh, incentivizing. And another big pillar that we're going to talk about in the blockchain five is tokenization. Tokenization, incentives. It's the name of the game for anything. It's 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 why we go and, and do work. Yeah, we all love a good day's work. Uh, and uh, I love to work. I, I work for free all the time. But um, when we're allowing our devices to work for us, um, it just, the whole thing starts to make sense. And we'll get into that with tokenization. But so, so DLTs of tomorrow, possibly won't even have tokens, won't even have uh, uh, coins on them, um, but rather um, will have coins in the sense of uh, just data storage. Um, yeah, just in terms of, of being able to store something and making, say, a, a pseudo chain even more robust, even more... Um, honest, even more uh, uncrackable, even more. So what you may pull back on one thing, but you're trying to increase the technology on the other end. And we're seeing that in all different types of blockchains. Um, uh, the first three I always think about, um, you know, Bitcoin was the huge one that came about 13 years ago. And then uh, Digibyte came along and Ethereum came along and um, and Digibyte and Ethereum were, were really just trying to improve on, on what Bitcoin had done. And so, and that's what's happening still um, with, all of those, with all of those networks, with all of those uh, groups. They're all just trying to improve on it. And so let me just run through distribution with you guys real quick. Um, what is so cool about the blockchain. So distributed ledger, we'll just, we're running with that right now is the blockchain. So distributed ledger, uh, so you've, you've now used your device and you have downloaded a full copy of the blockchain and you're receiving updates to transactions that are happening on the blockchain. And these, we're seeing uh, these companies that have, you know, built and created these blockchains and, and, and are, are giving them out to us and, and creating a more decentralized world are, are sharing them globally. And um, it's just, you see how that even makes a more robust network and a more robust system uh, it's so special. So we're, we're all able to trade uh, Bitcoin now all over the world. Um, there's, there's places that 
don't necessarily allow you to do it and and there there are still um places where it is illegal but um your <laughs> can't see how you could stop anyone from downloading a wallet and um trading it with anybody across the world so that is a very special thing with distributed networks um we're also seeing that there's no risk at a certain point of failure so if i am one of these nodes in the in the network and we're all basically transactions are are happening uh at any given moment and depending on the blockchain there's a certain amount of time uh that uh a new block will be created and say i'm trying i'm i'm deciding that uh you know i'm in the my computer's in the middle of uh of working out um a hash function for a block and I don't want to do that anymore. Like, I wipe myself off the board. Well, the depending on the size of the network, um, that will not necessarily be affected. Even if there's an inaccurate block created um, and put in place, we've already seen in the mechanisms that those blocks are being thrown out and being recreated. Uh, before they're published uh, fully to the blockchain or finality. Um, finality being so huge um, in terms of immutability, and that will be my next uh, video, is uh, got, got in deep on immutability, and it's just so fascinating. Why do we want to download the blockchain, and, and why, why is it so uh, uh, trustless and honest and it, it's transparency, you guys. It's trans transparency. When you can download an entire ledger of transactions, and Bitcoin being 13 years now, 13 years of transactions, and none of those transactions across were allowed to be inaccurate. And you can go back and you can look at the entire blockchain and see all of the transactions that is true transparency in trade and um and i think that's what's going to to revolutionize uh how we do finance and um and it's just so so exciting let's do it yeah uh what also we're seeing is more nodes equals more trust so why is that why is that because the network gets bigger and now there are uh, more people who are either buying the tokens or buying the coins or mining or using, you know, if we're doing proof of stake ownership and that all gets more and more distributed out. And so if, if someone falls off the board again, it, it's even, it's even less, uh likely that that one bad character could control say like 51 percent or any character can control 51 percent and then uh essentially uh change the blockchain how they see fit and that is something that is uh is one of the concerns and i will talk about uh, during immutability is is um uh 51 percent attack um but we'll get into that um globally so exciting more nodes so we in the industry we say uh trustless um that is because of immutability that is because of how the blockchain and the consensus mechanism works that's how hashing works um i'm gonna get into all that and uh borderless hello like we can do fast efficient cheap transactions with each other all over the world uh yes please yeah that that would be good I, i'm just saying i just saying guys i think that would be good anybody else post a comment below you think that'd be good i think so uh and i've and i've been hitting on this uh internet of things and you so essentially uh if you if you've got a computer and and you don't have to run a full node to contribute to the networks. We're seeing it with staking 
and other types of things. You can uh, have a wallet, you can stake, and you can do all these things on your phone now. And that is so awesome. Uh, and, and I am so excited about uh, companies and, um, and uh, exchanges and, and they're, they're pushing forward to try to get us to be able to have this transacting on our phone wherever we go. This is all building and growing and um, being in it for years now and starting to see it is just, it's, it's really cool. Um, and I'm, I'm so thankful for everyone who is contributing uh, all around the world to, to help grow it. Um, because I, I do think there's a lot of honesty and, and trust and, um, and the weeding out of, of, of bad practices that is just going to help everything immensely, uh, everything. Uh, we'll go, go through the rest real quick. Uh, nodes validate transactions based on the history of transactions on the blockchain. I've never seen it written like this, but this is how it works in my brain. It's essentially, there's, you know, there's a chronological order. Um, right now, I'm just thinking of Bitcoin's blockchain. Um, but, it, but it's just going across. You know, there's block one, there's block two, there's block three, there's block four. Um, and then you have... You have specific, uh, like a, it's called a nonce. You have a specific randomized number, and then you have all the data that is put into the block, and then eventually you put it through the hash function, and through the hash function you get a uh, cryptographic alphanumeric line or chain or or set of 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 data numbers that represents the data, the nonce and the number of that particular block. That is as simple as I can dumb it down. You can make it a whole lot more complicated. It is, the technology is really special and I hate to dumb it down like that, but right now that's, that's what we'll say and do. Uh, validation, so essentially we are validators. We are, as a node, we are helping validate transactions on the blockchain. And these blockchains, and like we know with Bitcoin, it's it's all over the world now. Um, you can tr you can exchange it through wallets on your phone, computer. You can mine. You can do all these things, etc. So what we're seeing is the decrease of cost in transactions. So what are what are all these innovators trying to do with blockchain? They are trying to make faster transactions. They're trying to make cheaper, and they're trying to make it more secure. So, uh, with blockchain too, um, there there is the incentive incentivizing component of that, um, both in proof of work and proof of stake. And we're starting to see other um, uh, ways that um, that we're able to use the blockchain um, other than those two that that are, are it's just so exciting um, that's a whole nother conversation um, but yeah that's what I wanted to talk to you all about today D just getting you thinking about why why we're interested in this why we're doing this uh, channel and uh, thank you all so much for the support um, dad and I are going full steam ahead on, on uh, just crypto videos and, and economic uh, uh, topics and, and issues, uh, issues in the way we want to help find solutions and inspire other people to create solutions. And, um, and I think it's beautiful when we all get together and we do that. Um, so on that note, love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a great day. I'm out.